this historic day. I spoke earlier with Jason Marzat. He's the Deputy Director of the Atlantic Council's Latin America Center. Jason, what does this actually change? I mean, they've had a special interest section in Washington. The Americans have had the same in Havana. Now they're embassies. What does it mean in practice? Well, it, it, mean, it means a lot in practice. I mean, this is, this is a historic day for, for both Washington and Havana. You know, since 1977, we've had, the U.S. has had a diplom uh, intersection in Havana, but that intersection has been incredibly limited. Now, with the reopening of the embassy, American diplomats can travel uh, freely throughout Cuba. They still need to notify the Cuban authorities that they're traveling, but they don't need to ask for permission. They can simply travel. Uh, the Cubans have agreed to pull back their, some of their security cord around the embassy. And importantly as well, the Cubans will no longer be taking the names of every single Cuban that enters into the U.S. building in, in Havana. Uh, so there's a lot of changes the U.S. Can can begin to, the the, mass, uh, the embassy there can begin to host uh, uh, missions, uh, trade missions, and whatnot. And you know, Cuban di diplomats as well as Was diplomats uh, from Washington will be able to sit among their peers uh, at functions in both capitals, no longer with the scarlet letter of being re a representative of an intersection. Right. I mean, what the Cubans would really like, though, of course, is the embargo, trade embargo, to be lifted. And with Republicans in Congress still opposing this easing of relations, that's unlikely to happen, isn't it? Well, you know, it's unlikely that the embargo will, is going to be lifted tomorrow, uh, but we have seen significant momentum for beginning to chip away at pieces of the embargo. There's, a, there's a, a, a bipartisan bill in the Senate right now that has upwards of 45 co-sponsors to end the travel ban. Uh, there are bills to uh, further allow for uh, uh, telecommunications, uh, agriculture opening. There's a whole host of different things that are uh, prohibited as part of the, uh, as part of the uh, full embargo um, that we're beginning Beginning to see the, the momentum for change on, on, on Capitol Hill. Yeah, I think one of the things that's most surprising about this, partly if, if somebody had said to me a year ago we were going to see the flag raised over the Cuban embassy in Washington, I'd have said they were dreaming. But one of the biggest factors, in a sense, has been this was passed off with almost out, without a murmur from public opinion. And it was your work at the Atlantic Council, really, that gave the first indication that this could happen. Yeah, well, th yeah, thank you for that. We, 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 our, our study last year at the Atlantic Council, our, our bipartisan poll, the first uh, national poll, uh, showed that the majority of Americans, uh, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents all support a normalization of, of relations with Cuba. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, for 50 some odd years, our Cuba policy has been dictated by South Florida, Miami specifically. And our poll and other work that, that has been done has shown that the American people, when they realize what, what the state of the relations is, are that the American people realize that this is a policy that has simply failed over the last uh, five decades. And even in Miami, the, the momentum for, for change is there. The younger Cuban American population sees the fact that the, that the embargo simply hasn't worked in bringing about any type of change in government in Cuba. And, and that there's the younger population sees a, a, a overtures toward Cuba as being an opportunity to uh, begin to affect uh, change in the island that will better the lives of the Cuban people. Okay, Jason Marzat, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you very much.